Thanks to a failing battery, the disassembly of the foot switch was lost. But we'll do the assembly of the foot switch and you can just imagine it going in reverse. This is a resistance type switch. There's a contactor inside there that presses on a set of coils. The tighter you push the coils, the less resistance there is and the faster the motor goes. It's rather an old-fashioned setup, but it obviously works well. And they're pretty durable. The only thing that I've found to go wrong with them is the resistance coils will burn out over time. Especially if you try and run the thing at low speed because that puts more heat into the resistor. This has screws that go through the top. And hold the resistor block in place. Then there's an insulating block. When you press on the pedal, it pushes on that insulating block and pulls on the screw. And there's a copper plate that goes against the insulating block. Has a little step there to hold it in place. That lines the thread up into the hole. That goes down into there. And you slide a screwdriver through this hole and align it with a slot in the screw head and thread it into the bolt, thread it onto the bolt. The further you take that screw in, the farther it pulls the resistor. Ah, okay. I can see that's a problem. I need to loosen this screw up so I can pull that resistor out of there a little bit. That should allow me to drive that screw in at an angle and make it lined up with the hole in the resistor block there.
it's important that that plate reach the end of its stroke and touch these two contacts because that shorts out the resistors and puts the sewing machine at full speed. This is adjustable through this little hole here so you can control the top speed of the machine. That speed or that setting is adjustable through this hole in the base and that when the grommet's installed and the base is secure, I can get that grommet to go back in there. and it's taken a set over a few centuries and doesn't want to do anything other than go back the way it was. Okay, now I'll put these on. Oops, almost forgot. The insulating pad. This is asbestos. There's a lot of horror stories about asbestos. Some of them are actually true. Try not to get any of this on you, and if you do, be sure and wash your hands. Because this is what's called friable asbestos. Friable asbestos can crumble and turn to dust. dust forms little hook shapes and those hook shapes go into your lungs in the form of powdered asbestos and they catch in the walls of your lungs and become trapped in the bronchial tubes when that happens, it irritates the lining of your lungs. When the lining is irritated, it reacts by generating a cyst to encapsulate any of the contaminants that are in your lungs. It also does a thing where the cilia, which are little hair-like fibers that line the bronchial tubes sweep material out of the lungs up so that it can be coughed out. Those big green hawkers that you make. That hook shape though prevents the asbestos from being swept out of your lungs and coughed up. And that's what causes the big problems. Having that hook shape means that those fibers get stuck in your lungs and will not sweep out. So, your lungs form a cyst around the 
the debris that they can't sweep out. And most of the time, it's just a benign process and your body takes care of it and you don't ever even know it. Sometimes, it can cause a reaction where it generates cancerous cells. And those cancerous cells are a very bad thing. Now we have the switch assembled. Gonna have to touch up those screws a bit. But it should function just fine now. I'm gonna go wash my hands.